Yo, what's up lads? It is your favorite mums here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Alrighty, so for today we have got part three coming at you guys of our How to Start FIFA 21 little like video tip, whatever you want to call it. So basically the first part we went through kind of, you know, it, right at the start, what you do, picking your starting nation, what version of FIFA to buy and kind of dates and things. The second uh, part, we went through trading methods you can use. Today, we're going to look at how to invest right at the start of the game, all right? Now, quickly, before we go into it, I show you guys some like actual graphs and everything from uh, from this FIFA. I first want to quickly say to you guys, because a lot of questions that come out are like, when should I invest? Now, I wouldn't recommend investing unless you have a, a large chunk of coin. So if you're someone who puts FIFA points in the game and you've got a lot, a lot of money at the start, definitely trade with some, invest with some. If you get lucky at the start, you pack a really big card so you've got a lot of money, invest some, trade with some. Or if you're just a good trader or you, you make a lot of money trading early on in the game, you know, after the first... I mean, the earlier you can invest, the better, obviously. But, you know, after the first week, you're sitting on a fair good amount of coins. You can invest some and then keep trading with some, all right? You don't want to invest all your money. The only time I would recommend investing all your money is if you don't have time to trade. So if you're someone who maybe has work all the time, can only get on FIFA for like an hour a day or two hours a day, and you can't do much trading, and you'd rather just put your money into something, sit on it for a week or a week and a half, whatever, and then cash out a week and a half later to some nice profits, then that is fair enough as well. But obviously, you're going to make more. If you're someone who has a lot of time to spend on the game, you could sit there for five hours a day or whatever, you're going to make a lot more money daily trading than you would from any investment, all right? Even a really, really good investment. I mean, at the start of the game, you know, we can get some good investments. We could get some investments that you can make 200, 300% on your your initial investment, which is huge. Because usually, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30% is a really, really good return during the year on, on an investment. So at the start of the favor, getting a 200%, 300% in return on investment is absolutely massive. But even then, you're still probably going to make more money in that week that you're holding the card from trading than you are from investing, all right? So I always recommend having some money. I normally do a bit of both. So I normally trade with what I have. Like last year, for instance, you know, I did the advanced SPCs. I had 50,000 coins. I traded my way up to, I can't remember exactly. I think in the first like three days, I was sitting on like 700, 800, 900,000 coins um, liquid from uh, two or three days of trading. And then basically with that, I kept, you know, two, 300K to trade with and I invested like 600K, all right? So that's kind of what I like to do. Um, and then it's up to you guys how you want to run it, yours or your situations, I guess. I can't exactly tell you that right now until it comes around to it. Anyways, let's get straight into it. So there's a lot of different trading methods that you guys can do, okay? And there's a lot of trading methods that you're going to hear about. Um, I'm going to explain to you guys throughout FIFA and just from watching my stream or watching my YouTube content, a lot of different uh, investment methods and ways of investing. But at the start of a FIFA, there's probably a few main ones that you're going to hear a lot, okay? That is, sorry, I wrote them down so I don't forget any. That is obviously Team of the Week uh, investing, OTW investing, uh, MetaCard investing, League SBC card investing, and predicting SBCs and investing in that. All right, obviously there's going to be like later on in the game, you're going to have like complimentary investing and things like that, but that's for another day and I don't want to overcomplicate things for you guys right now. Now, I'm going to quickly explain to you which ones I would do and the reason why I wouldn't do the others, okay? Some people, like if you're on a Patreon or if you listen to other channels, are probably just going to put out content for all of them. You know, you can invest in this, you can invest, in, and they're going to put out content for all of them, all right? What I'm trying to do is narrow it down for you so you get the best ones, all right? Rather than just giving you a wide variety where it's like you pick. I'm giving you the best ones. Now, I wouldn't be investing in predicted SBCs, okay? Predicted SBCs can be profitable. Um, and it's more of a, like, look, that can change if I get a leak. Sometimes I get leaks and stuff like that. If I get a leak, you know, maybe we invest in stuff like that. Or I think there can be a lot of money made because I'm pretty sure that there's a definite SBC coming out for this. Otherwise, it's not something that's really in our control, okay? We don't really, we don't know 100% what's coming. We can predict what's coming because, you know, maybe EA did it last year, but... EA might, as I showed this year, they changed some of their promos. They changed some of the dates, their promos. You know, I mean, they change things around from year to year a little bit. So you can um, mess yourself up by doing that. And it's not very safe. 
and I like to have control of what I'm investing in, all right? Knowing that I can 100% make money off this, it's not a gamble. Basically, when I invest, I'm not gambling. Some people gamble. They, they put on money on their investments and they hope it comes through. That's not me. I put my money onto cards that I know will go up and I know will make money. I mean, people could probably vouch for me. It's not often that in previous years anyways that I will give people losing investments, all right? Obviously, it happens. It's going to happen to every trader and you're a liar if you say it doesn't happen. But when it comes to me giving you guys investments, I try to be quite um, safe and, and, and give you guys stuff. Like maybe I'll be a bit more risky with my own things, but I try and give you guys stuff that I know will make you uh, good money, all right? So I wouldn't be touching that. You've then got team of the week investing. Now in previous years, so FIFA 18, FIFA 17, hang on a second. Sorry about that. Uh, team of the week investing was extremely popular and extremely profitable. And I did a lot of it in like FIFA 18 and made a lot of money from it. FIFA 19 though, it wasn't very profitable. And I, I went away from it. I pretty much didn't touch it after the first like three weeks of FIFA. And that's basically because we had no icon SBCs. Without Icon SBCs, there was nothing to really um, hold the informs up to a good price in terms of like fodder, uh, uh, fodder informs. Usually, you know, you'd jump on 81, 82 rated informs from good leagues, good nations, good positions. You'd buy them for, you know, 10, 11, 12K. In a week's time, once they're out of packs, they'd be up at like 20. And some of them, even more. If you guys remember from FIFA 18, how it is, the left back, German left back, he went up to like 60K. I'm pretty sure we jumped on, I told my chat, we, we jumped on a, a bunch of him for about 15 or 16K and he went up to like 40, 50, 50K, something like that, crazy. So, but that's just not happening, didn't happen this year. It wasn't a good investment. Um, you can still get on it and you can make a little bit of money, but in terms of early on in FIFA and the profit margins, unless we get Icon SBCs back or unless EA drops something early, that requires icons, like SPC that require icons that are popular. Um, I don't see that being that profitable again uh, or the most profitable method anyways, right? Yes, you can make money, but there's other things that you can do better on. So unless we get icon SPCs, I would stay away from that for now. Um, but if we get icon SPCs, obviously, you know, I'm going to be streaming all this stuff and doing YouTube videos. So I'll talk you guys through it as we go. And if it, if it comes up, you know, we'll change our plan as, as it comes, right? We've got to take it as it comes kind of, um, the next thing when you look at is league SBC cards. Now, a lot of people would love to go and invest in league SBC cards. You know, you get, we get the Bundesliga, Premier League and all those league SBCs. Um, you got people go and buy all the silvers from, you know, all the silvers that are needed in like different teams or certain positions and things like that, or golds that there's only one of them in that position. Wait till the SB, the league SBC comes out, that player skyrockets. Examples, FIFA 19, you had Paderborn players, Dijon players, Norwich players, who were all 10 to 20K each, a lot of them. Um, the silvers anyways. So that's what a lot of people do. Uh, now, I can tell you right now, league SBCs don't come out till about a month after FIFA release. So if you're going to do that, you're going to be holding those cards for about a month. So a lot of people like doing it at the start of FIFA because they can get the silvers cheap at the start of FIFA and then they wait that entire time. If you've got a shit ton of money like, and you just want to go and put a little bit of it on, on some of those cards and just hold them forever for like ages, I mean, that's up to you. But for me, I don't like holding things for that long. Um... I like, you know, in terms of investments, I like to get in, get out. You know what I mean? If I'm investing in something, you get in, hold for a week, a week and a half max out. Uh, you know, I don't like holding stuff for a month. It's, you know, and tying, you're tying money up, right? You could be making money with that money instead of tying it up for ages. So I'd stay with that. All right, so that leaves us with two, right? So you've got OTWs and meta cards. They're the two that we're going to be looking at and they are the two that will be the most, pro most profitable in the first two weeks of FIFA, okay? In my opinion, um, unless, you know, there's other information that comes out later. Now, when I say OTWs, I don't mean, um, I don't mean OTW themselves. I mean, they're gold cards. So when the OTWs come out, their gold cards go out of packs for a week, all right? Or as long as the OTWs are out for. So now what happens is the gold cards get put into packs for a week. You've got one week where the gold cards are in packs. A week later, the OTWs come out. When the OTWs come out, um, the golds go out of packs. So there is limited supply of these golds because they've only been in packs for a week, okay? 
and then they're out of packs for a, and then they're out of packs for a whole entire week. So naturally, you know, with low supply and obviously higher demand, prices rise. So they they go up really really. Low. And I'm going to show you some examples of cards that I invested in this FIFA uh, and made some good money off. And then the other thing is meta cards. All right, we talked about this a little bit last episode um, about different cards you can invest. Like Longlay, I, I use Longlay as an example. That was one that I preached to my um, stream at the start of this year. I told everyone in my chat at 15k Longlay was just too cheap. Go and buy, go broke on him. I said, I said go broke on him. He went up to 120k. That is legitimately what, like a, I don't, know, I don't even know your chat. What's that? Like a a, te, a, a thousand, sorry, I was going to say 10, about a thousand percent profit, which is unheard of. If you can tell, give me anybody who will make you a thousand percent profit per investment, I will eat my hat chat because it's not happening, but we did it last year for our subs um, that were in the sub discord. And actually, no, actually I told everyone that one. So that was just in my, in my stream. I wasn't even part of the sub discord. So, um, Let's get into it anyways. Let's get into some graphs and showing you guys uh, some of the other things, all right? So let's flip over to our desktop. So this is starting with OTWs. Now, Hernandez, Brandt, and Yetta were three cards that I invested in at the start of this year. They were all OTWs. Now, I already explained that the reason why they go up is because they um, have a very low supply. And when supply is, when demand is higher than supply, prices rise. Now, you want to also be careful though, because if you've got an OTW, like uh, I think from last year, uh, we had Joe Linton, right? I'm probably saying his name wrong, chat. Sorry. But uh, he didn't, obviously he didn't rise. He had an OTW, but his gold card didn't really rise. Reasoning, nobody was really buying his gold card. So there was no, there was no demand. So there was barely any supply, but there was also barely any demand. All right. Obviously, you want to pick cards that have a high demand but a low supply. So Hernandez, we've got French, great nation. We've got Bundesliga and we've got 81 pace. All right. He is just the definition of a, a meta defender at the start of a FIFA. And he was probably in terms of like rating and stuff like that and price, he was probably the best center back in the Bundesliga to start off with. Um, to start the game with that was, you know, of a reasonable-ish price. So there was obviously going to be a high demand for this card. Now, as you guys can see, this is when the card originally came out. So that was day one of FIFA. So obviously the earlier you buy, the better, obviously, because it's like any FIFA cards, meta cards will all rise from the start, right? At the start of the game, there's barely anyone on the game because the full game release hasn't came out yet. It's just web app. So every single day into full release and then after full release, price is just going to rise, okay? So the earlier you can get on, obviously, the better. That's why money is key, having money early. So trading and, you know, grinding your guts off early in the game, the first few days is just going to set you up so much better going in, all right? If you can get money, obviously, you might not be able to buy them in on here, right? But if you can get money in these first few days... You know, you could buy in like here. That's five days into the uh, into having the web app. Five days of trading. You could have over a million coins by then. And then look, look at all that increase you've still got to go. Okay? Anyways, as I was saying, OTWs went into packs on the 27th of September. So right here. Okay? That's when they went into packs. So this card went out of packs. His gold card went out of packs. All right? Full game release. And that's what he went packs. And then look at the rise. So he went from 53,000 coins all the way up to 83,000 coins going into Weekend League. That is a 30,000 coin rise and about what, like a 75% a or 70% increase in profit, which is, um, which is huge, all right? Profit percentage. So that's easy money, you know? Once again, if you had money, if, like I said, if you, if you had to say, if you were sitting on a million coins at that point and you just didn't want to trade for a million coins on that, with a million coins, what? You could buy 20 of him and then you're making 30K a card, 20 times 30 chat. Someone do the math for me. What's that, like 600K? About 600K. So you could have made in the space of one week, one week right there, that's exactly one week. Could have made 600,000 coins profit from a million coins. All right? Easy, easy, easy. Now, 
Another card I looked at was Julian Brandt and Ben Yedda. Same thing. I'm just going to quickly show you the graphs. He went out of packs right here. So on the 27th, it was 23K. Going into the first weekend league, he was up at 31K. So he went from 23 to 31, which is a nice sell. That's about a 33% uh, increase, which is very, very nice. And then you got Yedda, who went out of packs here on the 27th. Once again, the earlier you get him, the better. If you got him down here, you could have gotten him even cheaper. But he went out of packs here, so around 40K. And then going into the first weekend league, he was sitting at 63K, which is, again, about a 33% increase in, uh, in value. So very easy money to be made there. Now, you do have to be careful because not every OTW rises. Like I said, you've got to pick them, okay? How you pick them, it's all about how meta the card is how usable the card is, how much demand that card's going to have. Someone like Yetta, this card was super meta at the start. Everyone wanted this card, um, highly used card. Brandt um, wasn't as touted as these two, as the other two, or as some cards. The reason why I jumped on this card was because if you compared him to someone like Havertz, Havertz was really, really high in price. And if you compared him to Havertz, they were pretty much the identical card. But because of popularity, Havertz was just way more expensive. So I was like, well, look, when this card... When Havertz gets too expensive and this card goes out of packs, this card's going to start catching Havertz, right? So I saw that, that margin there that I liked. And then obviously Hernandez, like I already explained the reasons for him. You also got to watch out for over-investing, all right? So that's where, I mean, it, it helps to maybe to watch my stream and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm friends with a lot of other traders and I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube. You know, I do all the... I've got my ear to the ground in a sense. So I'm hearing, you know, what a lot of other traders are investing in and what a lot of other traders and players are doing. And that's sometimes the smartest move is to go away from them. You know, if everybody in the community is jumping on Yetta and investing on this Yetta, what's going to happen is he's going to artificially inflate and then everyone's going to jump off at the same time trying to sell and it's just going to plummet, right? And you're going to lose money. So you're also going to be careful of over investments, all right? Which is something that is actually happening more and more as the years go on, as you know, more people open Patreons and more people think they're insanely good traders, and you know what I mean. It, it, so it's something you've got to be careful of. But I'll, I'm here to help you guys through that, and we can we can walk through that in the streams, man. Like I said, we're going to be streaming every single day, man. The streams are going to be pumping out. All right. Also, like I've already said, if you're a sub in my stream, um. You can get into the sub discord where I'll be posting stuff in there about it all. So, you know, you'll be able to see it on there as well, as well as my Instagram. Uh, I'm posting daily Instagram trading content and YouTube and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty hectic for FIFA 21 and a lot of information coming out for you guys to help you out. Now, the next part, which is probably my favorite investing is just simply better cards. Now. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right, it's simply meta cards, guys. Now, it sounds simple, and it is simple. It's actually very, very simple, but it's also probably one of the most profitable ways to, uh, like, profitable ways to make money. It, it, it's as simple as that. It's, it's probably, in the first two weeks of FIFA, it is probably the most profitable investing. All right, it's how a lot of my subs made a bunch of money last year. I told them to jump on. I told you long lay for one of them. I also told them, I put them up here. These are the ones I told them to get on. So I told them to get on a few cards. But Rashford, long lay, Allen, Dembele were four of the cards that I, that I mentioned in my stream. Um, I really liked these two at the time, I remember. These two I was pretty heavy on. Um, long lay was my favorite. Allen was probably my second favorite. Then maybe Rashford was like my third favorite that I was telling everyone in my chat to get on in terms of this type of investing. So they're the, that's why I, they're the ones I picked as an example, just because I personally jumped on those myself. But then, you know, there's a lot of other cards you could have looked at as well um, and reasonings for it. Now, the way you pick a meta card is just by, there's a few factors, right? Position they play, their stats based on their position, their nation, their team, their league, all right? So when I'm looking at this card, you know, first of all, I know this card's going to do really, really well in terms of price. It's going to be expensive. Because he's English from Manchester United. So he's from the most like popular nation, the most popular team in the world. He um, is fast. So speed is key at the start of FIFA. Everyone loves speed. If you've got speed, the card's going to do well. So he had the pace. He had five-star skills. You could just tell this card was, was going to do well. 
Now, obviously some cards you can tell are going to do well, but they're already high in price. That's where you've got to try and pick it out, right? What we like to do at the start of FIFA is I'll go through just the footbin list of cards and I'll just go down and I'll just pick, man. And that's where it kind of comes out to knowledge, right? You can just look, I'll just have a look down and be like, okay, well, look, I know this card's going to be high and this card's sitting really low, too low. Buy that card. This card's sitting too low. You can buy that card, right? But these, these, this is kind of like, I'm just trying to talk you guys through my thinking as I'm doing this. So I see Rashford, I see all those attributes. I'm like, okay, this card's going to be good. I'll look at his price. And this was day one price. It was sitting at 39. That's actually a lie. That's an average. I was seeing, when we were on, we were getting, seeing him at around 32, 31K. You could have gotten him for. Now, that was day one. Obviously, look, he ended up going up to, I mean, could have sold up here at 72. You could have sold up here at 83. Depends how long you want to hold. So he actually got up to 90 um, in the first weekend league. They usually hit a peak first week. So what you would normally find with players is there's a, a big cut. There's a big jump in the first like three days, as you can see here. First two or three days, there's a big jump. Okay. Then as it gets to, and that's because like everyone's, you know, just starting the game. Then you'd normally see a little bit of a lull just before full release. Okay. In going into Monday and then full release comes out. Look, going into full release, full release is on the 27th. I think it was, you've got a good increase. The reason why this card would have gone down a bit, there would have been like a little bit of over-investing probably. He's dropped down a little bit and then rising back up into the first weekend league. They're normally at their highest point going into the first weekend league, which is here. And that, and that is his highest point for the entire um, time, all right? So going to first weekend league is normally when they're, they're hitting their highest, a lot of these cards. But once again, I mean, you could have gotten this card day one if you've got a lot of money. Big margins. But even if you couldn't get this day, card day one, you know, if you could have picked him up on the Monday, which is like, you know, how long is that? Four or five days into the game? 70K. Could have dropped him off uh, a week and a half later at 90K, 20K profit. Uh, this was my favorite because, like I said, this card says 23K, but this card was actually 15K on day one. 15K, and he ended up going up to like 120 something, but I would have jumped off going into the first weekend league, which was here. So 90K. So you could have gone 15K to 90K. But like I said, even if you got him late, even if you got him, you know, around here, just before the full release of the game, 63K, jumping up to 90. So there's different points you can get in on these cards, all right? The earlier, the better usually. But if you get in too late, then I would say at latest is probably around here on the day of the full release. Day of full release, there's normally a dip because so many people are on the game and so many people are opening FIFA points. There's usually a bit of a dip in all these gold cards. That's why you see them all dip on Friday. Look. See? Friday dips. Alan. See? Friday dips. Not much dip there, but a bit of a dip. They all dip on Friday because everyone's opening FIFA points. There's just so many packs being opened that they dip and then they re-rise again into weekend league, all right? So very, very easy. Uh, once again, Allen, 26K at the start of the game. First weekend league, he was 66K. That's like a 250% increase. But once again, even if you can't buy him on day one, because these, these day one prices are more for people who either get lucky on advanced SPCs or you know have money in the game or something like that. If you're trading, it's gonna take you a few days before you can afford players, right? But by day four, if you're trading your guts off, I mean, there's no reason why you can't have 500 to a million coins by this time here. And you could still buy in there at 50K, hold him for a week to 66K, right? Make yourself, what, after tax, like 13K a card, 14K a card. Same with Usman Dembele. Starts off here at 25. Going into the first weekend league, he was 73. Once again, even if you can't afford to buy in there, you could buy in down here where he was 57 and then he rose to 73. That's about what? A 14K per card profit or so like that. All right. And there's, there's heaps of examples. They're higher priced examples. But I mean, look, you could even look at other cards like a, a St. Max or something like that. Now, obviously, a St. Max was a very meta card. He would have risen, I would say. But obviously, the margins will be a lot less because, you know, you're talking this card was like 10K or something, right? So you're talking less margins. But if you've got a low budget, man, um, you can still make some money on these kind of cards. So yeah, there you go. It was 7,000 coins on day one. 
going into the first weekend league, it was 20K. You know, even if you bought him at any of these points, really. So if you bought him on the Tuesday, which is about five days into the game coming out, you could have gotten him for, what, 14K? And then he still rose to 21, 20K. I mean, that's not a bad margin when you think about it. You're only spending 15K and then you can ma you're making about 5K a card or 13K you're spending whatever it was and you're making about 5K profit a card off a 13K investment, right? That's pretty good for investments. So yeah, that's basically uh, it, guys. Um, that was probably a little bit long-winded. I apologize. I just like to go into detail when it comes to that stuff. I mean, if you guys don't like that, let me know, okay? If you want me to be more quick, snappy, sharp, you know, just tell you and, and that's it, let me know. Um, I try and like give you guys my thinking behind these things and, and why and stuff like that. So that's why I go into detail a bit more. But yeah, just let me know guys uh, what you appreciate and what you want to see going forward because we're going to be doing a lot of these, uh, a lot of videos going forward and stuff like that. Um, yeah, if you like the video, man, if it helps you out, chuck a like on the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I said, go to, I'll put my socials down below. So my Twitch, my, uh, my Twitter and my Instagram. I'll obviously be posting daily trading content on Instagram. I'll be streaming on Twitch daily. I'm um, doing all this kind of stuff, man. And then obviously Road to Glory episodes, et cetera, on the YouTube. Yeah, love you guys, man. Appreciate you guys for hanging out today. I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.